The Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you Today's Word for July 31st, 2017. I'm just getting back from vacation. I haven't done this in a couple of weeks, and I'm excited. I'm thankful to get back to do Today's Word, something I've been doing for 19 years. Listen, this is not something I've got to do. This is something I get to do. And, and, and for that, I am forever thankful. When the Lord told me in December of 1997 to start putting his word in people's email inboxes, and even back then, I didn't, you know, not very many people did email in 97. Um, I didn't know that 19 plus years later, I will still be doing it and has grown to, you know, what it is today. And, and to God be the glory that he allows me Uh, you know, this forum, this venue to be able to share his word with his people for his glory. So um, before I get back into the series that I've been teaching on as Jesus is, I just want to share a few things about uh, the vacation and what God did, you know, from a vacation perspective, some things I've been meditating on that I'm led to share with you. And I really believe that these things are going to be a blessing to you. I'm going to share these things with you uh, under the title, the love of God, because really that's what it's all about. God is love. So I want to talk about the love of God this morning as I reflect on my vacation. So what does this mean to you today? As I go through, I just have two major points, but some thoughts. And as I go through these thoughts, I believe that you'll be able to glean some golden nuggets from these thoughts for you that apply to you in your daily life. So here we go. Two thoughts. Number one, the love of God is always focused on others. Um, I've said this many times that a lot of times if I, if I were to stop someone on the street and say, Hey, what's the opposite of love? Most people will say hate. Uh, the opposite of love is hate. But when it comes to God, the opposite of love is not hate. When it comes to the love of God, the opposite of God's love is selfishness. God's love is always focused on others. So while I'm on vacation, taking time off is important. And and I believe that rest is spiritual, which is why I'm thankful that the Lord allowed me to take a two week break uh, from today's word and other things. Um, spending time with my wife and children is absolutely paramount. My first ministry is to my family. Uh, it would be, it wouldn't be pleasing to God if I was a hero to strangers, but a zero at home. My first ministry is to my family. I have to take time for my family. I don't make excuses for that. I'm thankful for that. Uh, and I enjoyed spending time with my family, playing with the kids, resting on the beach, hanging out at the pool, whatever. All of those things are absolutely important. But even while on vacation, we were focused on being a blessing to others because God's love is always focused on other people. Ministry for us, I guess you could say, is a family business, right? So everybody in my family is, is kind of focused on, on, on ministry. And so Uh, Even while on vacation, you know, this happens every year. We do this back to school drive and then we do other things ministry related. I remember in December we were giving out 350 uh, toys to underprivileged children for Christmas. And uh, Joshua was there and I had Joshua in line and I was handing uh, the toys to Joshua and making him hand them out. He wanted to do it. And it's just a reminder to him of how important it is to give back and how thankful we should be for, for you know, the position that God has placed us in, uh, in life and, uh, and never to forget where we came from. Um, so while we were on vacation, even that, you know, like we're there on vacation, but my kids know, hey, when we go to this particular store, I'm gonna be talking to people about these backpacks and uh, school supplies and et cetera. We, we, we bought 350 backpacks, 700 uh, notebooks, 350 packs of pencils and 350 packs of pens and then pencil sharpeners and erasers, all that stuff. And we gave out 50 backpacks already and then there's 300 left to go and we'll give those out next month here in August. Uh, but my children know that it's, it's, it's really a, a family business. They get involved. They know that we're blessed to be a blessing. They know that we're focused on giving back and sharing the love of God with others. Uh, and so along those lines, while I was on vacation, Um, although I was on vacation, I preached twice. I preached twice last Sunday, and then I preached last night as well. I'll I'll talk about that here in a minute. But um, when I preached last Sunday, I preached about the love of God in both sessions. And as I did, uh, it was just the love of God that changed people. It was the love of God 
this unconditional love that God has for us, that God loves everyone everywhere and teaching people about this love so that they can fully embrace who God is because God is love. I saw lives changed by the love of God. And so I was taking time away from my vacation per se to focus on being a blessing to others, preaching the gospel, seeing lives change. And then I went back. It's funny. I was at my, my mother's house and, uh, and, and my family, Domino's, is really big. Like, it's really important. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a serious serious business with Dominicans. And I'm at my mother's house, and we're playing Domino's. And I already had preached that morning, and then I had, to, I had to preach again at 4 p.m. on Sunday. And so I preached that morning. I go home. We eat at my mother's house. We have a big lunch. And these people come over, and we're playing Domino's. And I'm in the middle of, of Domino, and we're winning. So uh, I, I think I was playing with my brother-in-law. No, I was actually playing with someone else. But anyway, we, we won uh, two hands of Domino's. And we were about to start our third when I looked, and I was like, oh, man, I got to go preach. So I, I had to stop Domino's. Hey, I'll be back. Let me go do what God called me to do. Uh, <laughs> and then I did. And then I came back, and we continued to have fun and that kind of thing. What am I saying about being focused on others? Love is always focused on others. Um, yes, you know, where you might think, if you don't know this whole domino culture, that that wasn't a big deal. No, for Dominicans, that's a big deal. For me to walk away from the domino table while, while we were winning uh, is somewhat of a big deal. But my, my point is that it doesn't matter when you're living your life focused on other people. You can have fun. God wants you to have fun. But he also wants you to do what he called you to do. Last night, I was in jail preaching the gospel, uh, and guess what I was teaching about? <laughs> the love of God, which is not surprising. Um, and God just sent me to, to tell these men that are behind bars that God loves them, that God loves them with an unconditional love. And I did something that I do all the time in jail. And I told the men, I said, hey, say this. Say God loves me. And they said, God loves me. And I said, okay, say God loves me. And they said, God loves me. I said, say, God loves me. And they said, God loves me. <laughs> say, God loves me, and I know it. And I said, hey, while I'm preaching tonight, you're going to get this thing. And I kept driving home the love of God. I said, hey, say, God loves me. And I kept driving home the love of God. I said, hey, God loves me. I kept driving home the love of God. And to, by the end of the night, they got it. And people were changed. Men were in prison or in jail, in this case, were changed from the inside out by the love of God. God's love is an inside job. When your heart is rooted and grounded in God's love, you just live your life focused on others and you're excited about it. You're thankful for it. Your needs are met. God wants to get you to the point where your needs are met, where you're good. You're not, you're not living your life focused on you. Oh, how am I going to do this? Or how am I going to do that? God wants you to get to the point where you're living out of your overflow, where you are so blessed that you're not concerned about you. You're concerned about other people and you're in this world blessed to be a blessing. At that point, your life becomes an offering to God. And I really believe that, that that's how I live my life. My life is an offering to God. I'm here to do whatever God tells me to do, however he tells me to do it. And when your life becomes an offering to God, what he does is he takes your life and he pours it out into the lives of others. He takes you as an offering and he pours you out into the lives of others because love is always focused on other people. I really believe this is the will of God. I, I believe this is where God wants us all to get to, to the point where we're giving ourselves over to him continually, where we're giving ourselves over as an offering to God, where we are available to God 24-7, whatever he tells us to do, however he tells us to do it. And at that point, he then can take your life and pour it out into the lives of others and change lives for his glory. I pray that, that you get to that point where you are walking with God and he's walking with you, that he could tell you to do whatever. And that you're down for it. You're down to do whatever he tells you to do. And that his will will always outrank and overtake your will no matter what you're doing. My second and final point today is that it is important to establish some altars in your life. Taking time to reflect is important. If you're going to maximize your purpose and potential while you're in the, the land of the living, you need to take some time to reflect. That's why it's, time, it's important to slow down. All of us. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm back to it this morning, right? It's Monday morning. Here we go. I'm back to it. All of us, at least in the United States, if, you, if you're busy, if you're doing stuff, you have more task than time, right? I always have more to do than I have the time to do it. So you got to prioritize. But you also need to slow down to hear from God and to reflect. Um, so being able to, to, to meditate on the goodness of God and what he's done in your life 
is absolutely critical. So while I was on vacation, um, the Lord had me to share a few things, a part of my life testimony with one of my friends. And I was talking to her about some of the things that God has already done in my life and some of the things that he has said about my future that haven't happened yet. And as the Lord had me to share with her story after story after story after story, um, and I don't, I, at the time, I didn't know why I was doing it. Uh, I was just like, wow, I, I've, I don't normally talk about these things, but I'm led to talk about them. So I was sharing my life. I was sharing these stories. I was sharing these exploits. I was sharing these experiences that I've had with God and things that God has said about my future that haven't happened yet with her. And she was, you know, being blessed by it. Um, and I thought that I was sharing all of this with her to be a blessing to her, which I believe it was a blessing to her. But I didn't realize how much of a blessing it was going to be to me. So in the days since I had that conversation, um, the Lord, I found myself just meditating, meditating on those things that I shared, that the Lord had me to share. And just going back and just remembering all these things that God has done in my life and how those things, looking back, have, have really rekindled and uh, re-energized me to be able to look forward to the things that God has yet to do. One conversation of reflection with, uh, with a friend has led to hours of thanksgiving and excitement about my future. See, sometimes it's important to look back in order to look forward. Uh, in biblical times, the Lord led his people to establish altars. These were altars of remembrance. And these altars, it was stones or whatever that God told them to do to establish an altar, they could look back whenever they were going through something. They could look back and, and remember what God did. Even generations later, they could look back and remember what God did. And it helped them as they were looking forward for what God was going to do in, your, in their lives. See, sometimes you have to trace yourself, right? Remembering God's goodness. Sometimes you just have to trace yourself. You need to go back and say, hold on. I'm about to face something big, but... Oh, thank you. Father, I thank you. I remember when you did this. I remember when you did that. Oh, man, I had forgot about this one. I remember when you did this. I remember when you did that. You got to go back and trace, 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 trace the goodness of God in your life. Trace what God has done. Establish altars. Remember those things. And as you trace yourself, you're able to pace yourself and moving forward, you're able to pace yourself uh, as you're as you're thinking about what's next, as you're moving forward into the things of God for your life, as you're opening your heart and believing God for, for the next phase and the next exploit and the next experience for you to, to pace yourself moving forward. Sometimes you need to trace yourself moving backward. And as you look back over what God has done, you can believe God for what's next. It's important to establish some altars in your life. It's important to reflect over the goodness of God so that you can open up your heart for what God wants to do even in this next phase and in this season. So let's close this message out with a declaration of faith tomorrow. I'm going to get back to the series. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to just, you know, hear me, hear me out to talk about my vacation and how it was a blessing to me. And I trust it was a blessing to you. So let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me in faith from a believing heart. Speak these words over your life. Say this. Say, Father, this is a year of great victory for me. I say this without reservation. My confidence is not based in me or my performance. My confidence is based in you and your tireless dedication to me. You love me with an everlasting love. I did nothing to cause you to start loving me. And nothing I do will make you stop. I believe your love. I receive your love. I embrace your love. And I become a conduit of your love in this world. You bless me so that I can be a blessing to others. I live my life on, focused on you, Father, and focused on being an emissary of your love in this world. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Sign up, get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. On the right-hand side of the website, there's a big subscribe button. Now, help me to share this word 
If you're watching this on Facebook Live, then leave a comment and then post this on your timeline. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like button and share this on your social media. Let's get the word out that God loves everyone everywhere. It's the love of God that's going to change us. It's the love of God that's going to change other people through us. Let's share the love of God today. God bless you.